and welcome to my channel. My name is Lynn and today is day six of my Crafter's Companion 2021 Advent Calendar series. I hope you've been enjoying this series of videos so far. And today, behind day number six, is this um, rather good size stamp of a uh, two-tiered cake. And I'll actually be making two cards today because this first card was really fast and easy to put together. I am combining the um, cake stamp with this really awesome glimmer foil um, banner. I think this was one of the glimmer club um, sets. And I'm not a member or a subscriber of their clubs, but I do buy them when they go on sale after the fact. And this was one that I thought was really awesome because there are different sentiments that you can foil onto the banner. And I'm just using my bone folder to give the solid black sections that are in the foreground that have the sentiments foiled onto them some additional shaping and curvature so that those will sit a little bit raised from the card front. And then the um, sort of the shadow, the, the layers of the banner that have the striping, those will lay and adhere flat to the card base. And I'm not even going to color in the stamped image of the cake because I really like this very uh, simple, clean card where it's just black and white essentially. Technically I use silver foiling, but um, but I really like that there isn't any color on this card besides uh, essentially, you know, black and white. So I'm just going to attach these banner pieces together and it's really simple to do. You just line up the straight edges of um, the stripey bits with the solid bits and that's pretty much it. Now if you don't want, if you want to have the same curvature and dimension that I've got going on, you'll need to put a little uh, foam square just on the center of those banner pieces that are have the uh, sentiment foiled onto them and I think that's enough to keep that curvature and keep the banner from crushing or flattening in the center there so that will um, that will keep the dimension and then I'll go ahead and attach my cake stamp which I did fussy cut out because the um, day six came with the stamp but not a coordinating die but it's a pretty easy image to fussy cut out so now that everything is essentially all attached and one piece I can just put some glue down and stick this all down to my card so where you see these um, sections that I'm putting adhesive those are the stripey bits of um, the banner and I'll leave links to this um, glimmer set if it's still available which I'm I'm sure it must be. And of course, the advent calendar itself, I think it's sold out on the Crafters Companion website, but it looked like HSN still has it. And so I have links to both because Crafters Companion may at some point restock and they are always offering sales, deals, double points, things like that. So oftentimes I, I feel like you can catch a good bargain on their website directly. But I'll leave links to both so that you can um, find it wherever it's still in stock. And that's basically the card complete. I thought about adding some Nuvo drops in the uh, ebony black, but... In the end, I decided against it. I just wanted to keep this really clean and simple. And I think the the card is more effective that way. So here you see me actually pulling out my Nouveau drops. I did get um, 
a new color that I think is a glitter drop in night sky. You actually might see me pulling it out here um, because I thought about potentially using that as well. Um, and I was so indecisive that I thought to do what I normally do, which is just to create some dots on a paper release liner that I can then just preview on my card before committing to actually putting any drops down. Uh, but I end up not doing it. Here's that other color that I picked up. It's called Night Sky, which I thought would be a more dark, sort of a black glitter drop, but there's some really nice blue tones and it's almost like a more denim color. So really pretty cool color. I'm, I've really enjoyed using that one too. Okay, so now for my second card, what I'll do here is I'm going to put some um, powder, anti-static powder, on this scrap piece of white cardstock, and then I'm going to stamp with a clear embossing ink. So I like to use Versamark, although uh, if you've caught any of my recent Sizzix um, craft box unboxings, unboxing videos, you'll know that I have, I think at this point, three Sizzix branded clear embossing ink pads, full size like this one. So I'll never have to buy another <laughs> clear embossing ink pad. I'm still working on the very first one I ever bought. So these last a really good long time. But I am trying out this Sizzix gold glitter embossing powder just to see how it compares to the wow embossing and and I really like it I like this um this gold it's a very rich gold and I think it's comparable to the I think it's called the rich pale gold in the wow line of embossing powders but I I really like it a lot the Sizzix brand one it's a I don't know that they explicitly state that it's fine detail, but it really did catch all of the fine detail in this stamp image. I'm going to let my heat gun warm up and you can see how red um, the heating elements get. And that's so that once you put the heat to the card, that embossing powder will melt straight away and there will ultimately be less heat applied to your card because you won't have to hold it there for quite as long. And so you should get less warping of your cardstock if you do allow your heat gun to warm up for um, a few seconds, like maybe 10 seconds or so, I think is good enough. So here I'm just pulling out some, uh, I cut down some black uh, cardstock, just uh, had to rummage a little bit for some scraps. But what I'm going to do is a splatter technique to, um, do some more gold embossing on this panel. And I haven't done this in a video before, but I've been experimenting with this technique and I think I like it a lot. So I thought I would show it on video. Let me know what you think of it in the comments below. But it's uh, it can be a little bit messy, so I'm bringing out my silicone mat here for easy cleanup. I have a solution of gum arabic, which I buy in powder form, and I mix it one-to-one -one with distilled water. Distilled water is important because if you do mix um, your own sprays and uh, things like this, you want to use distilled water because it doesn't, the distilling process removes a lot of um, the impurities in water. And you'll find that if you just use plain tap water, your um, your sprays or solutions like these might have a funky smell after a little while. And so if you want to avoid that, then uh, definitely use distilled water. So I splattered on some of that gum arabic and water solution just um, like you would splatter on white splatter to create a snow effect, for example. And that um, gives me this nice sort of um, organic droplet uh, style of pattern across my entire panel. And because gum arabic has a, it is a binding agent, it will help to keep the embossing powder um, attached onto the card. I mean, once that water in the gum arabic solution melts off or uh, is heated off, 
it, the powder itself is a has a binding agent and will adhere to your card. But the gum airbag, I find, just keeps it onto your card during the heating process. I did try this with plain water, and it has a very different effect. Um, equally nice in a different way, but what I really like about the gum arabic is that it adds a lot of dimension. Now, when you melt this, you will see some bubbling and some movement, as you can see there. That's just the water in my gum arabic solution essentially evaporating off with the heat. And it is totally normal to see that, but once this is done, there's going to be a lot of dimension and you can, you can feel it. Um, the gum Arabic stays a little bit, uh, raised on your card. And I just think it has a really cool splatter effect. Um, I'm not too sure what happened, uh, in those streaky bits there, but I don't mind that because it's all, it's all organic. It's all fun. And, um, and I have really enjoyed using this technique. I experimented with plain water, I um, tried I tried another solution that I have, um, but I don't off the top of my head remember what it was. But the gum arabic and water um, solution was my favorite. So hopefully, if that's something that you work with, um, maybe you can try the technique and and let me know what you think. But I. The reason why I was experimenting with it is because I just wanted to have a splatter pattern, but use my embossing powders and um, instead of something like a um, acrylic paint or watercolor, because with your embossing powders, most of them are very opaque, and so I think it has a really nice... Um, uh, effect. So I've got these two panels here. This one is not completely dry because down there uh, where it's very raised, there's still quite a bit of that water and gum arabic solution underneath. So I'll, I'll set that aside so that it can completely dry and use this panel instead. And that's that's for messy techniques like this, it's one of the reasons why I like to do uh, two, three panels. Um, I don't like to do so many that I have to store it and it takes a while to use them up. But I do, if I'm going to make a mess, I do like to <laughs> create a couple while I'm at it and at least have some options for the current project that I'm working on and maybe have some options for future projects as well. I just picked up a pair of these Tim Holtz um, micro and I got the mini um, snips which are serrated. I initially didn't think I would like the serrated edges and um, but I keep having a hard time fussy cutting with the uh, fine detail scissors that I have from Fiskars. Like I, I feel like I can't get into the corners the way that I can here where I can just round um, go around that corner with my Fiskars scissors I actually have to cut into the corner from uh, both directions in order to really get a clean snip and I have to say these um, I hear everybody raving about these scissors being so sharp and so um, great to fussy cut with and I can totally see why. I really can. They they work really well. They are super sharp and I feel like you have a lot of control cutting with them because what I've noticed is that as you're cutting because the blade is serrated, I feel like it it grabs onto the paper and you can you can feel the serrated um blades cutting. It's almost like it's um, clicking into um, notches. Almost, it's hard to it's hard to really describe the the feeling of it. But I just feel like it gives me a lot more control as I'm cutting, and I can just turn it around in um, tight corners, like you saw, without having to um, actually stop my cutting and then cut in the opposite direction 
than what is natural to me just so that I can um, sort of cut into a corner from both directions. But I have, this was the first time I was using um, the new scissors I got and really, really love it. I think, I think I'm going to enjoy fussy cutting a lot more now that I have these scissors. So I'm just going to um, get this die cut uh, right onto my background and I'm not going to color this either. I, I really want these cards to just be really simple and um, have just that gold background sort of speak for itself. I'm not even going to put a sentiment at the moment because I think when I go to use this card, since it can be so um, multi-purpose, it can be for any celebratory occasion I feel and so I'm not gonna put a sentiment at the moment but I might glimmer uh, like use some gold glimmer to add a sentiment when I go to use that card so here are the uh, final look at the two cards that I created using the cake stamp behind door number six I again hope that you've been enjoying this series and if you have please consider liking, commenting, and sharing this video and if you do subscribe and ring the notification bell then you'll get a notification when I post my video for day number seven. See you then. Happy crafting! Bye!